In the secret world, the answers are often right at our fingertips, whether we are aware of this or not. If you have not watched the first episode of Questions, I would recommend you do so first. In this show, I will provide the answers, to the best of my knowledge, and with currently available information in-game. This will, of course, involve heavily spoilers, as well as the occasional source outside the main game. I will also try to refrain from speculation, except in a special segment at the end. If you did watch Questions and you played Legend's predecessor, The Secret World, you probably noticed I may have stretched the truth a little. There are bees of other factions, and even rogue bees, though the status of the latter is often in question. Boone, Carter, Moose, Khalid, Amari Yu, the Maria Trader, and even Queen Victoria have all been touted as possible bees. However, this episode is not to speculate on any of them. For these rogue bees, at least those that are most likely to be bees, there seems to be a common thread. Carter, Boone, Khalid, Moose, they all talk about receiving recruitment offers from multiple factions, which they turn down. The thing is, we're never given the opportunity to even turn them down, nor are we approached by more than one recruiter. There seems to be something different about our imbument from the more naturally occurring bees. In addition, most of them, except Carter, seem to have become bees long before the current wave. As for other factions, we know of at least one bee working for the Council, Lorraine Mallard. Her story is told in the 2015 standalone game, The Park. Spoilers for The Park ahead. The short version is that Lorraine was a single mother with psychic or magical potential, who was tortured to the point of madness by the Boogeyman, and tricked into killing her son. After regaining lucidity, she was recruited by the Council, rather than being sent to jail to take part in a project to create artificial bees by forced bonding. The experiment was only a success in the short term. Although she was successful in bonding with the bee, she proved to be a poor candidate psychologically. She was haunted by the trauma of the events surrounding her recruitment. She became suicidal, but was unable to successfully kill herself. She spent 30 years searching for a solution a way to end her life when the bees were unwilling or unable to cooperate. There are things we can learn from this. Number one, the Council has the ability to capture and keep bees of Gaia. Number two, there are criteria for bonding with a bee that we do not know, one of which is likely already existing magical potential. Number three, although forced bonding is possible, humans are not very good at selecting people to bond with bees. The bees themselves do not make mistakes, but humans do. So the Council's current monopoly on bee recruitment must have been a more recent development, probably as a result of the experiments that created Lorraine Mallard. One important detail I believe is hidden in the interface itself. We select our faction before we even make our character. The only thing this affects at this stage is what background for character creation, so there's no reason to do it right now. It in fact creates three times the work at this stage of the game. The only reason for this is very simple. Our faction was chosen before we were. The big three factions are tracking the bees that are going to bond with someone, and whichever faction we join already called dibs on that bee. The thing that all three have in common is that they are all council members in good standing, and they have the wide resources necessary to track the bees. But what about the Phoenicians? We know that they hold great, if unofficial, sway over the council. So why can't they just get the council to throw them a few bees now and then? No one will notice, and a few always slip through the cracks. In order to exclude the Phoenicians, Bees must follow through official channels. Someone must be giving this information to the Council before they ever give it to our faction. Here I enter the realm of pure speculation. The Council at some point switched to a catch and release program for bees, or might even be keeping a guy in a beehive of sorts so that they can follow them on their way to crawl down our throat. Our grey-eyed recruiters, and note all of our recruiters have grey eyes, 
Are seers able to track and predict the bees? Perhaps artificially imbued with this ability by the Council. The Council relies on the wide reach of our factions in order to make sure as few slip through the cracks as possible. They received this information from one of the lesser factions, possibly the Druids. This prevents bees from being poached by rogue council elements, or just from interfaction rivalry, while allowing this minor faction to retain its autonomy. But that's just speculation. Thank you for watching this, the first episode of Answers. If you have not done so yet, please watch the companion piece, Questions, as well as my other series, IA the Bee, an in-character Let's Play following the adventures of Debbie Fish through Secret World Legends. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you did not enjoy, then this thing's almost seven minutes long. Why did you sit through it all the way? What are you doing with your life? Are you okay, man? Are you... you need someone to talk to? I'm here for you, man. I'm here.